G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to our small little backyard farm and aquaponics YouTube channel. Today's clip is on some trees, a little stand from behind me here, that I've been mulching up over the last week or so to turn into some wood-based composted mulch for our veggie beds out in the front yard later on in the year. Now, this is a bit of a take two. I have already uploaded it. Uh, apparently, I wasn't very clear that I'm not making actual ramiel wood chip mulch. I'm making up a, what I called a ramiel style or similar to ramiel style mulch, um, but I'm also composting it, which is something you don't do when you're making up true ramiel wood chip. So I really thought I should um, re-upload the clip and just let you folks know. Uh, the whole point of me uh, doing these clips is hopefully to um, spread, um, spread some information around the net that will be helpful for other folks. So I did think it was well worth pulling the clip and just adding this little bit in at the front here. So without any further nattering on, um, we'll go and have a look at the Chinese Celtus behind me here. So the tree I'm using to make up our composted wood mulch is this Chinese Celtus, otherwise known as Chinese hackberry. In the past, I've misidentified it as Chinese elm because that's what a lot of the locals call it. To two totally different tree varieties though. So when we bought our property, the two side uh, fences in the backyard were littered with dozens of these trees. And I came along with an ax and a handsaw and removed them all and ended up just dumping them, not knowing any better at the time. The ones I couldn't remove down this fence line here, um, I've basically been pollarding ever since. Pollarding is when you get a tree and you chop it off at a certain height and the regrowth that comes from it, you harvest that and use it for other purposes. Willow that's used for making basket is um, created in that way. They pollard willow trees and in other places around the world they do it for firewood with different tree varieties. Uh, with the Chinese Celtus, I'm making um, compost out of my bits that I harvested. So. With this tree though, being a restricted pest in Queensland, um, one thing I do like to do is make sure it doesn't go to flower and then set berries. The problem with this tree is it outcompetes native plants and basically smothers them uh, where it sets up large stands. So it is a uh, restricted plant. I feel I am managing it responsibly though because I'm not allowing these plants to set fruit to be then spread around the, um, the local environment by flying foxes and also birds. So I think, you know, other people have said I'm being irresponsible. I think I'm being very responsible harvesting these guys. Eventually, um, the neighbors and I will be ripping out this fence and these plants will be removed because we'll be making a little bit of a retaining wall when they put a shed in in their backyard. So they won't be here forever, but while they are, I'm going to make use of them. So one of the reasons I've decided to um, keep pollarding these trees and turning them into compost is that they make a very nutritious one. These little growth points on deciduous trees are packed full of nutrients that do release themselves into the soil um, through the action of fungi also bacteria and compost worms to be taken up and used by your plants later on. So with the deciduous tree, you obviously have a lot of energy going to the new growth points whenever the leaves start to emerge again. And the timber here, the little sections of branch, also contain a very high quality lignin that when composted and broken down, form a very top-notch humus in the soil. It's said to be um, better quality than straw and manure-based humus. Because it takes so long to break down and the humus is um, uh, such a good quality, it is probably one of the better compost and mulches you could use around your veggie patch. Now with these branches, it's recommended that you um, harvest them before they get to around about seven centimeters in diameter, which is roughly two and three quarter inches, because that's when they're most jam packed with nutrients and actively growing. I tend to harvest them a little bit smaller than that because my mulcher will only go up to roughly around about an inch and a half in diameter. So I'm, I think I'm getting a very good ratio of nitrogen from the leaves to carbon from the um, interior of the larger stems. Just quickly before I show you my operation down the back, I haven't been able to find a lot of technical scientific information on the ramiel wood chip. Most of the information from this clip comes from a paper called Ramiel Chipped Wood, The Clue to a Sustainable Fertile Soil, put out by Professor Gilles Lamour from the University Laval in Quebec, Canada. Um, there'll be a link in the description below to that and also a, uh, to a paper put out by Linda Chalker-Scott from the Washington State University. It's a bit of an info um, sheet 
on using wood chip around the yard um, just for you folks who um, might be interested in using wood chip and of course there's always the, um, the ever popular Back to Eden movie um, there'll be links to um, all those PDFs and um, the clip down in the description so we'll head on down the back and I'll show you how I've been processing these branches so this is what our fence line looked like a couple of days ago before I got into the mulching and this is what it looks like now with three out of the four Chinese Celtus plants removed or trimmed right back. And you can see the little blueberry barrel down in the back corner. We've finally unearthed her. So just to give you some idea, um, this is one of the trees I've been pollarding for quite a number of years now. And as you can see from all those little growth points, we've definitely harvested a lot of material from her. She's actually pleached herself around a pole over the back there. Um, that's one of the reasons we couldn't dig her out to begin with and also the fence wire too so that's why these guys are staying in there until um, we pretty much will take the whole fence out and build the little retaining wall which i'll have a chat about in a minute so all that plant material pretty much all got chewed up by this little beastie here um, this is just a cheap little $20 mulcher we picked up at the local markets because uh, it had a dodgy wheel. So the way this little mulcher works is a little cog draws the plant material in between its teeth and a metal plate and it breaks off the bits of plant material into small sections. The little sections it breaks off are roughly around about 25mm or 1 inch in length so a nice size to um, break down. I've found with previous composted amounts of this wood chip that it turns out very spongy, which means it absorbs a lot of moisture after roughly around about, I don't know, three to four months. So it also depends. I mean, if I was just to um, pot it all on the ground here like this, it would take definitely a lot longer to break down and to release its nutrients than running it through a um, composting situation first. As I mentioned, uh, it took me a couple of hours over two days to uh, fill up this cage. I used a bit of a production line method, basically went over and cut off some branches, dragged them over here to this little working area, and then trimmed off any of the smaller branches so they will go directly through the mulcher here. Filled up my two little bins I had, catching the scraps down the bottom, then just tipped them straight into the compost pile itself. After the first day, the bin was about half full, so I decided to pour in around about two litres of aged urine that I've been using as a fertiliser and also added in some water. Uh, the urine is just full of ammonia and nitrogen, so it's basically going to help kickstart the composting process. Once I'd almost finished on the second day, I did the same thing. I added about a litre and a half worth of aged urine and then dumped a couple of loads of wood mulch on top of it and gave it all a bit of a drink. And as you can see, it has settled down overnight. So that stand I was standing in front of at the beginning of the clip will be mulched up this afternoon and then added in on top of this again. I'd say after she's all broken down, we'll probably only end up with about uh, maybe a third to a half, if that, worth of mulching material. But it will be enough for us to cover a couple of the beds out the front there and maybe a couple of these little wicking barrels as well. What I was originally going to do with the Chinese Celtus was lay it on top of some cardboard amongst these different barrels and beds down the back here to try and suppress some weeds just to make it uh, easier to see what's underfoot while we're walking down the back here. But yeah, as you saw, definitely think it's better used as a mulch for the veggie beds. Uh, I will be um, mulching this area down here and I've already started. Um, this mango tree here is growing basically a little bit far towards the back fence here. We want to try and lop it off a bit because we'd like to put a banana plant down here at some point. So what I did was I took off the branch that was directly above the um, ginger bed here, crushed a few plants in the process, but I've mulched it up and just popped it on the ground here. So I'll continue to do that with a couple of branches over the fence that the neighbors don't want anymore. And I'll do the same thing. I'll lay it as a mulch around the back area down here. Uh, the Chinese um, Celtus is just a little bit too valuable to use as a ground mulch, I think, for the time being. What I might do is I might post a clip on some of the other mulching plants that we've got around the place here, or plants we grow as mulch, and also um, some other mulching practices that you might find helpful in your situation, because it's not really a one-size-fits-all glove. 
So just a bit of an update for you folks who have been following our little backyard farm here for a while. Um, as you know, we haven't had chickens for a number of months now. And the reason being is I think the pen was in the wrong position. So now that these trees have been removed, what I'm going to do is build a small little retaining wall about 60 centimetres to a metre out from the edge of the paving in the garden area. And I'm going to um, raise the ground level using some soil from these beds in here and this barrel as well. Just build up the soil so we've got a little bit more of a um, flat bit of ground here to put some wicking barrels on and whatnot. And what's going to be going right here um, under where that barrel is and down to the far side of that first grow bed there is a chicken pen. And I'll be pulling up all the pavers, the beds will be taken out of course, and we'll have our little chicken pen set up here and we'll have two or three birds running around looking after scraps and giving us eggs daily hopefully. So that's pretty much all the plan for this area. Um, also too why these beds haven't been planted out. Um, I've also had a few back issues I'm just working through at the moment. So I haven't been able to do a lot of hard yakker out the back for quite a few months. So um, yeah, um, hopefully we'll start working on this though over the next couple of weeks because I definitely like to have some chooks in here before things start to get a little bit cooler during winter. So once that wood chip is ready, I will be bringing you folks along and just showing you what it looks like and how I'm going to apply it to some beds out in the front yard. Um, I think by that time we'll probably be growing our brassicas, so we'll just wait and see if that comes to pass yet. Uh, also too, um, the other clip that I mentioned before, the mulch clip, I will be posting that in a week or so's time. Uh, basically just looking at different mulches you can grow yourself on your own property. I mean, we're limited to what we can grow here in a suburban block, but if you've got a little bit of acreage, you definitely can grow a lot of your own mulches. So um, probably about a week or maybe two weeks time, that one will be making an appearance. Uh, just at the end here, I'll give you a bit of a closer look at the little native bees and pop a few links up that you might want to suss out to different websites and videos and whatnot. I do hope you've enjoyed the clip and you may have got something out of it and I will catch you all next time. Cheers folks, have a great one.